I'm Nadia Ely, and welcome to today's discussion around innovation and the role it plays in our business units and Dominion Energy's success. We created this podcast to showcase grid resiliency's programs while featuring our top leaders and subject matter experts who broaden the program and highlight the strides it's making. In this episode, Dominion Energy Chief Executive Officer Bob Blue and Senior Vice President and Chief Innovation Officer Mark Webb give us a masterclass in the value of innovation and how critical it is to transforming the energy industry. Thank you both for being with me. I'm going to go ahead and get started with you first, Bob. We're going to talk about Embrace Change. As you know, it's one of Dominion Energy's core values. It's one that focuses heavily on how innovative thinking and diverse perspectives improve our business performance. What is the future for innovation at Dominion Energy? Well, I think it was Yogi Berra, at least this is attributed to him, who says, I hate making predictions, especially about the future. But let me start by focusing on, as I try to with many of these kinds of topics, our mission. So we have a mission at this company of providing energy that is safe, that is reliable, that is affordable, and that is increasingly clean. And as I think about the future of innovation at our company, it's going to be to advance that mission through new ways of thinking and new ways of operating. And you can learn a little bit about the future by looking at what's happened in the past. And if you think about our company in all of those areas, if you look over the last two decades, we've adopted new approaches that have improved our performance. So with new tools and new training and new procedures, our safety performance has improved. People get hurt less frequently today than they ever did. And we would expect to continue to drive that number down because our objective is to be a company where nobody ever gets hurt. We operate more reliably today than we ever have. If you think about the storms that we had right before Christmas in Virginia and South Carolina, we got the lights back on extremely quickly in very adverse conditions. And it's because we do things differently in restoration than we once did, but still maintaining that bedrock of reliability. Our prices are lower than they've ever been. The amount of our customers' paycheck that goes to paying us for energy is lower than it's ever been because we operate more efficiently today than we ever have. Finally, our process for providing energy to customers is greener than it's ever been. We're using new ways of generating electricity. In our gas business, we're reducing leaks from our pipes. So all of that is to say that we would expect going forward that we're going to continue to adopt new technologies, that we're going to continue to think about doing things differently, but always focused on that core mission of improving our ability to deliver on that core mission. And then the final thing I'd say about the future of innovation is I don't think we can exactly predict. That's kind of the point of innovation. Things are going to change the way we think about innovation at the company will change the same way. And you'll hear us talk a little bit about how that's evolved at our company over the course just of the last few years. But ultimately, all of our focus is on improving our ability to deliver on that mission. That's why innovation is such an important part of our company today, and I expect it will be for many years to come. Thanks for those points, Bob. Mark, anything to add there? I would just reiterate what Bob said in terms of we don't know where innovation is going to go. I mean, the point of innovation is to be prepared for it, to teach ourselves as an organization how to think, how to look at the future. You'll never get the future correct if you want 100% in terms of predicting where it goes. But you can take steps to prepare yourself to be able to respond to the future and to adapt to it and to incorporate what's coming into the way you're doing business. Great addition. So we often hear about a culture of innovation. How strong is this culture within our organization and as leaders? How are you advancing that culture in areas like grid resiliency? Mark, I'll start with you and Bob. I welcome your thoughts afterward. So I think advancing the culture is one of the core focuses of the innovation group since we were formed four years ago, was change the way we think and our openness to change. I think it's a cliche to say that utilities don't innovate because I think that's not true. Historically, utilities may not innovate quickly, but they've innovated smartly. The world's changing. The speed for innovation, the need for it has changed. But we have a history of innovating at the company. We don't think about it that way, but we built the first workable electric streetcar. We had the first environmental department for utility holding company. We built the first combined cycle gas turbine. We did the first large-scale utility electric school bus program. 
So we do do things. We don't always, we haven't always historically thought of it as innovation, but the need for innovation is growing like most industries and the need for faster innovation is growing. I think that's where we're focusing our culture. Yeah, and I might add, particularly with respect to grid resiliency, this company has been innovating for quite some time. We had the first mobile substation not too many years ago. We've been an early adopter of technologies that allow us to control voltage on the grid. We built the first 500 kV large transmission backbone in the country many years ago, and we've been rebuilding that over the course of the last decade or so. So when it comes particularly to the grid, this machine that our industry has been entrusted with for more than a century now, we've found ways to advance within the industry, and the industry has found ways to advance as a whole. So as Mark said, people may think of utilities as being kind of staid and old, and we do focus quite a bit on reliability. That's an important part of our mission, as I described. But we innovate in ways that enhance reliability for our customers. We would expect to see more of that going forward, more use of drones, for example, when we're thinking about inspections or even potentially when we're restoring power to customers, more use of technologies that allow voltage flows to adapt to renewables. When the sun is shining, solar farms are producing energy. When a cloud crosses, that output is reduced. That's very different than the way we have traditionally generated electricity. The grid needs to be able to adapt to that. And we're employing technologies to allow us to do precisely that. We have a culture of innovation at this company. We have for some time, we've had it specifically with respect to the resiliency of the grid. And we've got the people in place to continue with that approach moving forward. Thank you both. And that's a great segue, Bob. Mark, I'm going to ask you to walk us through the programs and activities that Dominion Energy has in place to encourage and promote the sharing of new ideas and innovation. Thank you. I think we have several programs and they've evolved over the years. The innovation team itself has innovated. The first thing I would note is Spark Tank, which was a program we did for the first three years through innovation with challenges throughout the company and pitches. We are reintroducing that this year. We're going to have two Spark Tank competitions open to the whole company. The first one is going to be what we call an open innovation, any types of ideas, inventions that employees may have. And the second one will be more focused. We'll give them challenges for specific types of business models to innovate, to come up with something new, to create specific challenges for the business units. But we decided to do that on the heels of last year was our first Lyra Innovation Lab, which we did, where we selected six teams of innovators throughout the company who had one business concept that was designed to produce revenue. Those employees went through a full year or about eight months of training and different challenges, learning how to market, how to price, how to create a product, how to market a product, and ended with a competition and announcing the winner to advancing several of those ideas into actual products for our customers and for the company. And then the second version of Lyra will come back next year. But it's a great opportunity for a deep dive for employees who are interested in innovation to take a business concept and turn it into an actual business model and one that they can then pilot and test and grow, hopefully, into something that creates revenue for the company. I think the other one, which I think people are familiar with, particularly the folks in Richmond, because that's where all of our innovation expos have been up up till now, it's a large expo where we bring in vendors, technologies, and expose our employees to various emerging technologies and opportunities that are out there that they may be able to utilize in their day-to-day work. This year, for the first time, we're taking it on the road. We'll have our expo in Columbia, South Carolina. So we're looking forward to that in terms of reaching out to employees who may not have been able to travel to Richmond for the expo and to broaden our reach into employees who haven't gotten the same firsthand look at some of the innovative technologies and efforts that those folks in Richmond have had. That is so wonderful that you are expanding it to the entire footprint, also another area of Dominion's footprint. Well, I might add the one program that Mark didn't mention that is particularly important to me, is the Chair's Excellence Awards, which has existed for several years. It's an opportunity for a group of colleagues to come up with an idea that in the consideration of the management team and their fellow employees is worthy of a cash award. So that's pretty good. When you think about some of the proposals that have won the Chair's Excellence Award, you know, I turn to, given the topic that we're talking about here today, 
grid resiliency, our team proposed using our solar sites for nighttime voltage stabilization. So a pretty interesting idea to think about a way to use a solar site when the sun's not shining. That was a team of our substation engineers and others. I think it really goes to the way our teams have thought and continue to think about what we can do differently, what we can take advantage of within our company to keep the lights on for our customers, which is what they care about absolutely the most. And I would just add, in addition to that, some of those ideas in the past have been actual products developed by employees that benefit customers or benefit other employees through better safety or operational performances. We have a program that if we have a particularly great product, we've changed our incentives to compensate those employees for those ideas and to help commercialize them. It's been one of the initiatives in the last year. And I would expect that sometime in the near future, we'll have some announcements regarding some viable commercialization of some of those products that employees have submitted through either Spark Tank and compete in programs like the Chairman's Excellence Awards. Very impressive. And Bob, you just mentioned the Chair's Excellence Awards. Outside of that and Spark Tank, Lyra, the Innovation Expo Mark just talked about, in what other ways can our colleagues share innovative ideas to better serve our customers and our company? I might suggest kind of an old-fashioned principle here, which is they need to tell their colleagues and their supervisors when they have an idea. Now, that's easy to say. We've all got jobs that keep us busy. So the idea that you come up with a great idea and you tell your supervisor or your desk mate and that that's somehow going to advance throughout the company, I understand that's probably not the way it's going to work. But we have ways to advance ideas outside of the ones that Mark just described, really through platforms within the company that allow essentially taking advantage of software that allow our colleagues to suggest an idea that a broader group of employees can understand and evaluate and potentially take advantage of. Part of what Mark's team does and part of what our innovation group is intended to do is make sure that we're making it as easy as possible for good ideas to permeate the company, to permeate this rather large enterprise. And that's not easy to do, but it's also incumbent upon the innovator to push a little bit. I can imagine that many of us can think of times when we've thought of an idea, maybe expressed it in a meeting and didn't go anywhere. And we think, wow, I had such a great idea. Nobody listened to me. Well, just telling a couple of people probably isn't going to work. We're going to make it easier across our platform for those ideas to spread, but we're going to continue to encourage our colleagues to push a little bit and not just think, my job is done here. I came up with the great idea. Now it's somebody else's job to pick up the ball and run with it. It's going to take a little bit more than that. That's an important part of the culture of innovation. It's not just expressing an idea. It's working throughout the organization to see it come to fruition. And it's our job as the management team. It's an important part of the innovation group's mission to make that as frictionless as possible. There's always going to be friction there, and we need to encourage our employees to uh, try to overcome that friction a little bit. And, And there are other ways that we think about innovation as well. We have a sort of overall label called Envision Tomorrow, which has been ways of our business units thinking about efficiency improvements, ways to get rid of work that is unnecessary or unproductive or other efficiency approaches that go to the bottom line that help us control costs for our customers, help us improve the profitability of the company. We had sort of pieces of that throughout the company. We brought them all under the umbrella of Envision Tomorrow. We think it's been very successful If you compare us to other companies in our industry on publicly available metrics, we're among the most efficient. And it's because of that mentality of our colleagues and that approach that is ultimately carried out through Envision Tomorrow. I know my team would strangle me if I didn't mention that the software that Bob refers to, the Forest platform, it's a new software the innovation team rolled out. Click on innovation from your Domnet page and you'll see Forest pop up. You can submit ideas. You can see other ideas that have been submitted. You can request crowdsourcing. You can even see technologies or ideas that the innovation team has tracked and researched and understand what's already been done at the company. If you have an idea that you think you're confused as to whether it should be an Envision Tomorrow idea, an innovation idea, or an HR idea, it doesn't matter. Submit it on Forest. 
we will get it to the right people. We'll get it to the Envision Tomorrow team. We'll get it to the business unit. Wherever the best place for that idea is, we'll get it there. If you don't have access to a computer, use your innovation accelerators. Every business unit has 15 or 20 accelerators. Learn who they are, ask your supervisor. Your innovation accelerators and guides at the business units will help advance that idea. And then I would reiterate, as Bob said, persistence. Persistence goes a long way in implementing and getting the attention that a good idea deserves. I really love to hear how encouraging you are of your employees, and motivating them to push for their ideas. That's really refreshing to hear from leadership. Bob, what are we doing to ensure that the ideas and innovations of today will benefit the renewable and sustainable landscapes of the future, particularly as they relate to Dominion's grid transformation plan? I think that's happening organically. When we talk about the mission of our company, an important part of it is providing energy that is increasingly clean. And the grid transformation plan, as we talked about a little bit earlier, is designed to do exactly that. Our grid, as it has been built over many years, started with the premise of large central power stations transmitting and distributing electricity outward many of those powered by fossil fuels. They have very reliably operated for us for a long time, but the grid now is starting to change. More distributed forms of generation, more intermittent forms of generation. So instead of the grid operating in one direction, we're now going to have a grid that is multi-directional. That requires new kinds of equipment, new kinds of thinking. And I might add that the best green technology is not terribly useful if the pole and the wire are lying on the ground. So some things that may not be seen as exciting or new, like stronger poles and stronger conductor, are actually very critical to things that are exciting and new. So everything about the grid transformation plan is designed to make sure that The grid of tomorrow can accommodate the technologies of tomorrow, the generation sources of tomorrow, and still maintain the reliability of the grid that's going to be essential for our customers and increasingly so in the future. Thank you, Bob. This last question is going to be for both of you. So we talk about grow the future, enhance performance, and accelerate the culture. Those, as you know, are the pillars of our innovation strategy here at Dominion Energy. Can you take us through how these pillars lead to innovative successes, both within Dominion Energy and and beyond these walls? Mark, I'll start with you. Well, I think we reiterate these three pillars every day with our innovation team. But certainly when we talk about Grow the Future, they're the big things that people see. What's happening with, for instance, vehicle electrification, with tremendous opportunity for electric utilities. That's a new business line in terms of new market share, per se. How do we play? What's our role? What business models do we need to make sure that we get that share of the vehicle electrification business, whether it's infrastructure or electric sales? But I think it's also to think about things that we do right now in terms of growing the business, which is I think there was the the winner of last year's Chairman's Excellence Award, came up with an idea to shrink the footprint of substations, transmission substations in Northern Virginia. Data centers are a critical part of the Virginia electric business and the growth for the future coming up with a way to make it easier to site those trucks as those substations enhances the performance and grows the business in a key element that's already uh, upon us, which is data center business. In terms of performance, I think we look across the board at what sort of tools can we use to enhance performance. Bob mentioned drones. We've done some very simple things. We just had an accelerator in South Carolina who has showed how to take a selfie stick and a camera to replace some time-consuming inspections of equipment as an alternative that's easy to do. It's not particularly high-tech, but it's using readily made, readily available tools in a way that the business unit hadn't been using it before to reduce time for inspections, to reduce downtime, and to reduce costs. Perfect example of that. In South Carolina, generating stations rely on something called the isolated phase bus and non-segregated bus duct systems to connect generators to step up transformers. If they fail, it's a big problem. Steve Palmer, who's a senior generation project manager for DESC, proposed routine inspections and preventive maintenance to make sure that the dust and moisture don't build up and cause trouble. Very you know, particular focus but it's the type of innovation that enhances performance, improves our performance for customers and reliability. I think we've talked a lot about the culture, and I'll just reiterate that part of that culture too is being aware of the changes 
that our customers are undergoing, because that allows us to sort of prepare for the future too and anticipate what their needs are going to be from their needs for resiliency, their need for data, their need for clean energy. We are changing our culture to better ourselves, but it also means changing our culture to understand what our customers are going to need so that we can adapt what we deliver, how we deliver that energy and the data that we use to deliver it. I think Mark covered that really well. A few years ago, Dave Christian, who preceded Mark as the chief innovation officer for the company, was reporting at a staff meeting that he had been up to MIT's Energy Innovation Center, and he said they've got 60 people working there, something like that. And I remember thinking to myself, that that can't be right. I mean, MIT is a big university with a lot of high-powered folks, but that seemed like an awful lot working on energy innovation. And I went and checked, and sure enough, it was something like that. I went and looked at that just within the last year, and that number has gone up by a substantial amount. And these are serious people at MIT. At first, I thought of that kind of as a threat. These are people who are working on technologies that could disrupt our industry and our company. But I was thinking about it wrong. Actually, we should be looking at that approach as an opportunity for us. And if we have the right innovation mindset at our company, we will take advantage of the things that they are doing at MIT, and we will, in some cases, improve upon them, in some cases, preempt them. It will allow us, if we have the right approach, to serve our customers better and ultimately improve the bottom line for our company. So I think that the culture of innovation that Mark described and the aspirations that we have for our approach going forward will put us in a very strong position to succeed for the next 100 years the way we have for the last 100. I'd like to thank our CEO, Bob Blue, and Chief Innovation Officer, Mark Webb, for their expertise and insight. Learn more about Dominion Energy's commitment to innovation at dominion.forestsoftware.com slash dashboard. Thanks for listening and be on the lookout for future episodes. I'm Nadia Ely.